Hey guys, I'm back with another CG modeling video. So, for those of you who are actually interested in watching these um, series of mine, um, these are obviously not talking about masks, but more on my digital side, you know, my CG side. So in this one, in particular, this one will be extra special because it is a Decepticon. Um, if you guys don't know what a Decepticon is, it's pretty much the the evil side of the Transformers. You know, you know, like there's a good and bad side. Uh, the good side being the Autobots and the bad people being the Decepticons. Uh, for those of you who don't know, so I've always been a I've always been a, a huge fan of the Transformers, even the Michael Bay movies. You know how something so realistic looking even though it's even though it was built from a computer how it interacts with the environment how it transforms all that good stuff so that's pretty much what got me into transformers even more um so this particular transformer is my own design um even the name is my own um believe me the name is has not been taken by the transformers universe because i checked okay i checked in the wikia the transformers um universe there is no name like the name I chose, which I will get to in a sec. All right. So without further ado, um, just to get things started, uh, I actually have a new program uh, right here, uh, Keyshot 4.3 Pro, similar to Marmoset Toolbag 2. They're pretty much rendering programs. Okay. So they're pretty much programs in which you put your character or your CG model in, and it will interact interactively with you know with whatever lights you put on it with any hdr you know background lighting it would pretty much render it automatically and interactively which is really awesome the thing with keyshot is there's the quality in terms of rendering with keyshot is so much better than marmoset toolbag all right um you guys can actually check out the site uh, keyshot.com i believe you can uh, you can see the power in terms of the render w with Keyshot, and it's a lot better. And you, I will also, and I will also at the end of this video, I will show you guys some renders of um, this Decepticon character, Monsoon, using Keyshot. All right, so stay tuned for the end. And oh yeah, and as always, as always, uh, the chapter skips for these types of my videos will always be in the description below. Okay, um, you really don't have to watch all of this unless if you want to, which will be awesome. All right. So to get, so anyways yeah that's that that's key shot um another thing I want to announce is this is not just your ordinary Decepticon this is not just a CG model of a transformer of my own design this is based off of my own car um, you guys will see this later on once I show you guys the actual picture of my car um, this is based off of my own car <coughs> excuse me and um, my 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 car right now, the car that I drive right now is a Mercedes Benz SLK uh, 2001. Uh, please don't make a big deal out of this, like most of my friends do. Um, you know, it's just a car, okay? It just happens to be, my first car just happens to be a friggin' Mercedes Benz, okay? So please don't make a big deal out of it. So in order to keep this um, character of mine personal, um, I I pretty much modeled this based after my own car. So later on, you'll actually see my own car um, in CG and also bits and pieces of the car on the Decepticon itself. So how cool is that? So it will so it actually looks like the car that I'm driving in real life is an actual Decepticon, which is really awesome. You know, it's one of my childhood fantasies, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, that's that. And also, if you guys want to know the name uh, Monsoon and where it comes from and why is it Monsoon, Pretty much what happened was um, during around uh, last year, uh, I believe it's around, I can't remember, it's like September, October, one of those months, um, a tragic hurricane or typhoon landed in the Philippines. And from what they um, tell us in the news, it's actually the most powerful um, weather disaster that the, that the Philippines has endured. Okay. So I pretty much wanted to name this Decepticon after that. Um, so the first name for this Decepticon was actually um, Hurricane, which is a really awesome name if you think about it. But unfortunately, Hurricane has been already taken in the Transformers universe. So I, I don't, I didn't really want to, I don't really, I don't really want to take names that have, have that have already been existed, you know, that have already existed. So I pretty much chose the name Monsoon, and 
it's pretty much monsoon is pretty much a great um, synonym for typhoon or hurricane because it relates to uh, a, a wind. You know, um, I, I believe that the exact um, definition for monsoon is it's pretty much a seasonal wind that happens only around Southeast Asia. So that's around the Philippines, and you know, it's just awesome. It may not be hurricane or typhoon, but it relates to wind. And to me, that's awesome. Okay, but yeah, that's that. So I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm getting at. Uh, this this Opticon, this Transformer character is my own. I designed him. The name is original. I built him from the ground up, and you guys will see that in a sec. All right. Also, this is one of the characters that will be in my demo piece, along with three others. One of them, one of them you already saw, which was Magdalene. You guys can actually see the video um, in the same playlist as this video that you guys are watching right now. Okay. Um, so this is going to be part of my demo reel, and it's also going to have its own transformation animation, okay? Uh, I will not show that in this video, of course, because it's not done yet, like I haven't animated yet, but it is rigged, and that's something new that you guys will start to see in my CG modeling videos, alright? You guys will actually see the character fully rigged. Um, I'm not the best rigger, but I do know how to rig things um, in a simplistic, generic way. Okay, which is enough for me, all right? Uh, as long as you can animate it later on. So you guys will start to see the rig character later on. Um, at, in fact, you guys will see that at the end of this video. All right, so you guys can go on and skip ahead if you like. Uh, remember, the chapter skips are always in the description of this video, all right? So yeah, that's, that's that for the intro. So that was a long intro, as always, for these kinds of videos. All right, so moving on, um, in order to start things off, let's go on to the references. So as a CG artist, in fact, as an artist, uh, this is important for any artist out there, whether if you're a sculptor, an animator, any artist, you, you guys have to know that reference is important, okay? So I actually use some reference right here. Uh, check this out. Uh, so these are pretty much the references that I used for my awesome uh, Transformers character, okay? So to start things off, here are some some images I pulled off on Google. Uh, these images are images that I think are pretty cool that I will apply to my own. So here is a uh, concept piece. I don't know if this is an actual Decepticon, but from what it seems here, this is a concept art of a custom Decepticon on, by the name of this person right here, Tony Keen. But anyways, yeah, that that's the I, I just think so, I just think it looks cool, you know. So that's definitely something. That's definitely a good reference right there. Something that I can pull off from. So here is a picture of my car, but um, this is not an actual picture that I took. This is an image pulled from Google. Uh, there's actually here is uh, the blue. Here's the blueprint of my car. Uh, this is a bit low quality, but you guys get the point. Um, as you all know, I'm not show. I'm not just going to show you guys the Decepticon version of monsoon um you guys will you, you guys will also see the the car the vehicle mode of this transformer okay so what i pretty much did was i mauled the car first and then the decepticon so here's another great reference image right here uh i don't know who this is exactly again it's another custom piece i guess um you can obviously, you can obviously tell how awesome this looks uh, you can obviously tell that it's a car. I mean, you, you can see the front bumper right there, the grill, the headlights. Not to mention, here's the wheel with spikes on it. So this is definitely a great inspiration. Um, here's another Decepticon. Uh, this is indeed an aircraft. Uh, so you, you, got, you guys get the idea. These are all the references. So here's a great one. Um, in terms of design, I, th I believe this is Optimus Prime. And you can, I, you can actually see the complexity of this model and complex complexity was something that I was trying to achieve um, in doing this Decepticon and I actually did um, a fairly great job uh, in my opinion actually so I ended up creating something a lot better than I thought I would so that's always a good um, a good aspect of this project so here's a here's a better resolution of the blueprint so again, um, this is not really reference. This is a blueprint. If you guys are recreating something like a car in CG, you need the front, back view, the side, and the top view, no matter what, if you really want it to look realistic, okay? 
if you want it to look correct, you need to have all this down in Maya, okay? And that's pretty much how you recreate it. And I'll be honest with you guys, the car, modeling the car was actually, to me, was the challenging part rather, rather than the Decepticon. So here's another good looking one. This one was is extremely complex. You can see all the parts are here. Uh, I believe I chose this reference because of the color. Um, if you notice all these Decepticons that I was just showing to you guys, uh, they actually don't have a real color scheme, you know? Um, most of these only consist of three colors. And you know, you have the main color right here, which is the main color of the vehicle that they transform into. You have the main color of the metal, like for example here, like this is, I believe this is steel maybe, some type of metal. You can also, you can obviously see that color here as well. Here's the car, here's the color of the tracks. I believe this is a tank. I'm not sure. Um, here's another color. Like it's pretty much consisted of metal color, and that's it. There, there's nothing, to me personally, there's nothing really special about the color. You know, as long as you maintain the color right. Um, depending on the car that you're using, you're pretty much good to go. And of course, red eyes because you know they're Decepticons. Red is usually in line with evil, you know, anger. And I believe that's it for references. So here is I pretty much combined all the references that I got online and and you know made it into one page and I printed this out. So this is pretty much what I used as inspiration and motivation when kit bashing my Decepticon alright kit bashing in terms of putting all the pieces together and making it look like a transformer and here's the re here's another reference um, you guys will also notice that later on I will show you guys uh, the separate pieces that I modeled that will populate the Decepticon okay so here's one of pe here's pretty much the pieces that I used um, I actually modeled a claw similar to how this looks like right here um, I modeled uh, some different types of gears I believe I modeled some rivets as well but I, I ended up not using them here's a chainsaw blade here's another gear that looks fat here's a piston uh, here's some coil some coils and wires I don't know what this is I, I believe this is a turbine of some sort here's a hidden blade similar to Assassin's Creed to an extent so you guys pretty much get the point. Um, when I was designing this Decepticon, I pretty much wanted it to have literally a sharp look. I wanted it to have a lot of spiky edges. Um, I want this thing to be made out of things that are sharp, you know, like this chainsaw blade, this spiky gear right here, and, you know, um, some, and, you know, blades like that. You guys will pretty much see that later on, okay? So let's get to it. Um, here's another. Here's also some references on my car. So these are actual pictures that I took um, of my car a long time ago. I believe this is around early 2011 when I first took photography. So this was a long time ago. So notice how I took pictures of the rim, some extra pieces. I notice how I also have a the Septicon emblem on my car. So that's how much I like Transformers. You know. So here's my car. Uh, you guys will see that. I modeled this perfectly in Maya. Um, every detail was there, you know, even the letters right here, even the the emblem right here, the Mercedes Benz emblem on the wheel. Um, but yeah, that's that for the, that's pretty much what um, that's pretty much what this is. Uh, you need references no matter what, pretty much. That's pretty much what I'm trying to get at. All right, so let's move on to the next segment. Alright, so here we are in Maya. Uh, I'm not really sure if you guys are seeing the whole entire program. But either way, uh, the point of the segment of this video is to show you guys the pieces that I modeled for the car. Alright, so you guys will also notice that... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you guys will also notice that the big pieces here are pretty much the pieces that populate the car itself. Oh, I'm sorry, not the car, but the, uh, the actual transformer. So, like I said before, you got a lot of edgy stuff going on. So you notice, how, notice here you have like this pointed cog piece right here. Uh, you have this buzzsaw looking thing right here. You got a turbine right here. You got another gear piece that has a lot of um, edges. Uh, you, you also notice that I modeled a chainsaw blade right here. Okay. Um, you guys will actually see me 
um, utilize each and every piece later on when I kit bash. Uh, here is probably one, I think, I believe this is my favorite piece out of all. Here is a hidden blade kind of thing. Um, I like Assassin's Creed and I like the idea of having hidden blades for my transformer character. So I modeled a blade that will extend once I end up breaking this, of course, and I'll show you guys that in the end. So the blade will pretty much extend as so right here. So there's pretty much two pieces. You got the you got the blade right here, and you got the socket right there. Okay. Now here is an interesting piece. Uh, here is like here's a, like a segment. Um, what's cool about this is that I'm planning on using it for for the fingers. So all I have, all I have to do pretty much is duplicate it as so. Put it at the, put it at the end. Um, shorten it down by a bit, and there you go. There's a finger segment. Okay, um, here's the claw that, that goes along with it. Uh, it's pretty much going to be inserted right here, and that's pretty much the finger. <laughs> oh, and here's a basic claw right here. Here is one of the pieces that, that I ended up not using, by the way. Um, this should look familiar for you for for anyone who's you know a, uh, a rocker, I guess, a heavy metal person. Here's actually one of the studs that you see in, like, in those fancy bracelets. Uh, so I ended up modeling that. Uh, looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a simple shape, pretty much. I ended up not using this because I figured if I put spikes on my transformer, it's going to look very heavy metal-ish. Okay? And that's not really the look that I want it to, to be. So I ended, I ended up not using this piece. Okay? So here are two different types of coils. You got a fat one and a skinny one. Um, and here is also another important piece to this whole Decepticon pileup mechanism. Uh, here is a piston. Okay, let me turn off this. Real there you go. So here's a piston. So it's pretty much gonna. It's pretty much gonna look good in the areas that have a huge amount of space. That's pretty much it in terms of the pieces for the Decepticon. Uh, here are the pieces for the car. Uh, notice here I got the. This is an important emblem. Uh, if without this, my car would not look like what it is. Okay, um, here is the Mercedes-Benz uh, emblem right here. Obviously, here's the antenna of my car. Right there, looks like a wand from Harry Potter. Here is the Decepticon emblem. So this was actually tricky to do, and I figured out a cool, unique trick to um, do these fancy shapes right here. You will notice that if I turn on the geometry, all of these are, um, these are all four-sided polygons, okay? Not one shape here is a triangle. It may look like a triangle, it, a it actually is not, okay? So if you guys wanna know how I did this, I pretty much used this tool right here. I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, I don't know if you guys are seeing the whole entire program, but if you guys are, um, the the tool that I use is pretty much sculpt geometry. Oh no, I'm sorry, draw geometry. So it, allow, it allows you to draw and pinpoint a geometry. And that's pretty much how I traced this shape right here, the Decepticon shape, as well as the letters. S, SLK230 compressor. That's pretty much the model of my car. All right, so that's it for this piece. Um, these are pretty much the pieces that you guys will see on the model itself all right later on you guys will see me kit bash these pieces all these right here if you guys don't know what kit bashing means kit bashing is pretty much the art of bunching up a lot of objects together and making it look comp complicated all right they did this technique in the original star wars in, in the 1970 um the millennium the millennium falcon as well as other vehicles in the movie uh they actually took a lot of junk and paste it together and that's how it got that complicated look all right that's pretty much called kit bashing all right so remember it <laughs> because apparently it is a term used in the industries all right so kit bashing all right so let's move on to the next segment uh, which i will show you guys the car all right so here's the finished car i will obviously not show you guys how i modeled this like you know like time lapse because it was all done in Maya, believe it or not, okay? This is not something you will do in ZBrush because that'll be hard, all right? ZBrush is mostly for organic shapes, you know, 
in terms of car if you really if you really want your car to look exactly how it looks in real life you need to do it in my in my opinion all right so notice that here's the finished car um, here is the topology looks good looks good everything is all smooth every piece is there like I said um, every piece is there so you guys will probably notice why is it black well it's black because it's a pretty reflective surface the way how it works in programs and CG is the blacker an object is the more it reflects so you guys will notice that based on the references that I showed you the material of my car is pretty reflective I mean you can see the reflection right there of the lights so that's how um, that's why this that's what that's what that's why this um, this model is black as of now of course if I render this out right now it's not gonna be black okay it's gonna be the original color of the um, of what I wanted it to be which is light gray okay so don't ask questions about the color this is not what it actually is once I render it okay but anyways yeah um, and again this is the finished car you will notice that it's rigged as well uh, I'm not the best rigger uh, in fact this is actually one of the first characters that I started rigging in my own time uh, he notice here is the drag this that um, nerb circle right there controls the drift okay see that here's the master control of course um, here is the control for the trunk if you want to if you want to rotate I believe it's a bit. Now that I think of it, it's a bit unnecessary to have controls like this. Um, you, I can easily just combine it. I, I can easily make a control for the trunk without using something visible like this. Because I, now that I think of it, this rig looks, you know, complex. Like it's not. It looks a bit too hard to understand. I guess I don't know. To me personally, because I, from what I know, in terms of rigging, you need to make it look. You, you need to make your rig look robust, but at the same time, not too complicated, so that when animators start messing with it, they're not going to get confused. All right? So here's pretty much the controls. You know, you got the trunk right here. Uh, you have the control for the rotation of the wheel. See that? Not awesome. Uh, you also have the control for the steering. So check that out. This was actually hard to do. Like, I forgot. There's a whole system on controlling this how both wheels you know steer like that it's actually tricky you know so you gotta you gotta know a thing or two about my if you wanna you know start rigging mechanically um, here is a control for the window uh, the thing is when I modeled the um, when I modeled the the car door it's not actually attached to the actual glass so you'll notice here when I open it the glass is staying there so what I did to avoid that problem is they you need to um, you need to lower down the the window first like that you know and then open up the car and of course turn off the visibility as so right there <coughs> so that's pretty much the car um, the car is finished it's all ready to go um, this is not transform ready yet. Okay, so you'll notice that it's just a car. Okay, there's nothing fancy about it. It's just a car. Later on, I'll actually make uh, a separate car with breakable parts, with breakable parts, and that's pretty much what's going to cause it to be a transformer. So it's going to be broken down into a lot of pieces, and then monsoon is going to emerge in its fullest form. If you guys get what I'm saying. Alright, so that's pretty much the car. You'll notice that, again, all the details are there, even the slightest detail in the lights are there. You got my license plate right there. Everything is here, ladies and gentlemen. The car is all good to go, and I'm really proud of myself that I modeled a successful looking car. Alright? Alright, so let's get started. So here, here we are in ZBrush. You'll notice that I'm sculpting the base armor of Monsoon my transformer decepticon character uh you guys would notice that i did this in zbrush because i really wanted to achieve a different shape on the armor the base armor and i really wanted it to to start from a sphere and work my way around it and you know whatever looks good i guess so i pretty much used zbrush for that so you'll notice here that i used pretty much a sphere you know 
and right here I'm just messing around with the shapes um, trying to trying to do what looks good I guess um, notice how I'm smoothing it I'm polishing it as I go um, that's pretty much what this is uh, so the base armor is pretty, much, is pretty much the armor I mean I don't know how I don't know how else to explain it it's the base armor it's the main mass of armor that you will see in my Decepticon. Now, of course, everyone does th um, does this differently. I guess I'm sure this is not the real way to create a to create a Decepticon. Okay, I'm pretty sure what they did in the production um, in the production uh, you know studio. I believe they actually literally they modeled each and every part of the Decepticon. Um, you guys will probably think, well, one is not what you did. Well, yeah, but I kept bash mine. You know, I pretty much put the parts in randomly, which you, which you got, which you guys will see later on. I, I pretty much um, intelligently placed the parts in such a way that it makes it look complicated. In terms of studio production, I believe, like I said, they actually modeled it from the ground up with each part being special. All right. I didn't do that here but this is pretty much my way of doing it and it worked for me and it looked great and I'm I really can't wait to be doing more transformers in the future so you'll notice here that I made some progress I created like a spine you know I really wanted it to look to give it that Decepticon look um, it's quite interesting because Autobots look like human beings you know while Decepticons have more of like a creature tone to their style you know well, that's that. Um, I'm pretty much doing the the pelvis right there. Now I'm doing the shoulder armor. So when you guys are doing something like this, especially if you guys are planning on rigging this, or rigging any character, you guys have to realize you can't get too crazy with it. And the reason why is because when you're actually adding controls for this thing, when this thing is actually going to move, you can't be too complex with the parts because the the parts will start to collide, and it's not really it's not going to look good once you start animating it when, when you start once you start animating with it you know so you gotta be careful so here I was trying to achieve a certain style you will notice based on what you guys are seeing right now on the base armor most of the pieces are actually protruding outwards to the back so it actually has that spiky look I guess so remember this the style that I want for this Decepticon is I want it to look like it's made up of knives or sharp objects and later on you guys will see what I mean so you, you can obviously tell this is looking really great I've been using a lot of um, brushes to really sculpt out to make it look like mechanical um, I used the trim brush so you can obviously see I used it right there because it's a clean slice uh, I also used the um, the clay polish tool it actually polishes your mass. It actually polishes it polishes out your model so that it looks more mechanical like. So that's definitely a must. So here's another one. Uh, played around with the shape for a bit on the wrists, and also you will notice that I actually added the fingers right there. So sorry if you guys didn't see me actually building the fingers, but you know I actually messed up on the recording of this. <laughs> Um, because I was dealing with so many pieces, it was hard keeping track of what I recorded and what I didn't. And some, and some of them got overwritten, unfortunately. But, you know, you guys get... I'm pretty sure you guys have an idea on where this is going at. Alright, so notice here I'm doing the legs now. Um, also, another thing I want to mention is anatomy. Since this is a, a fictional robot, you really don't have to care about anatomy. Alright, um, in fact, most Decepticons I've seen online, most of them have big arms and big fingers, you know, and big legs. So they pretty much don't follow the anatomy of a human being, but they still have the basics of what it looks like for it to be human, if that makes any sense. What I'm pretty much saying, folks, is you still need to know anatomy in order to make something look good, no matter what. All right. You will notice here that I have my proportions similar to a human being. Uh, the only difference here is I actually made the arms a bit longer, as well as the hands a lot bigger. So, you know, you still got no anatomy, even if it's mechanical. 
So here are here's the foot. Notice it's in two pieces. I also ended up making the toes so that the whole entire foot can move in such a way that's, you know. So it has like a heel and it has the, the front ball. So here we are. Um, this is the kit bashing part. You'll notice that I'm using the claw that was supposed to be for the arms or for the hands. And I pretty much just populated the head. And there it is. There's the neck, which I ended up not recording, unfortunately. Um, here is the torso. Notice how I'm literally just doing what looks good. Okay? I'm pretty much populating this whole entire base armor with random pieces. Of course, making it look good along the way. Okay? So there's the turbine. There's another turbine that's inserted within the torso. There's a piston right there. Another piston right there. You know? And this is this is probably one of the best times I've ever had in ZBrush. You know, doing this. You know? There's another turbine. Really big. Notice here that, that, that ended up becoming the arm joint for the shoulder. Insert some tubes. Another piston right there. So you guys get where this is going, right? I'm pretty much just populating the pieces to make it look complicated. And you guys are actually, um, you guys should be excited about this because you're watching this in real time. <laughs> I actually, I actually recorded this for you guys so you guys can see how I do, how I, um, how how I went about in doing this complicated character. And there's the um, the armor. Oh, I'm sorry. There's the arm. I inserted the hitting blade. Oh, and here's the part I think where I uh, started doing the fingers. So you'll notice that this took a while to do. Um, I'm pretty much just duplicating the pistons right there. And there you go. Those are the fingers. So now we're doing the uh, the legs. So you'll notice that I'm pretty much using the same piece over and over. Um, I'm using a lot of the turbines that I, I modeled later on. <coughs> and uh, here's another chainsaw piece right there. I added it right to the head and I deleted the parts. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's how it's done. Uh, this is looking really good. Um, I had trouble with the head because I feel like I was it wasn't enough for me. So I pretty much ended up adding, adding more pieces. Notice that I didn't notice that this Decepticon has more eyes than the usual. So it really has that creature look to it. So here I'm populating the leg pieces, making it look good. So you know you guys I'm pretty sure you notice that a lot of pieces are in this character. And it, so it was really hard organizing the UV maps, you know especially coloring it and stuff like that so this was definitely a challenge and you guys will see there's another chainsaw blade right there added it right on the legs another small piston right there on the calf on the calves calf a lower leg you know some coils another coil uh, there's a turbine right there notice how i messed around with the shape so that's pretty much what this is. This is pretty much what it's all about, guys. Um, there's the ankle. So you're pretty much populating the whole entire base armor. You know, hopefully you guys get inspired in doing your own transformer. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, it's actually not that hard as you as it may look. Okay. And uh, oh yeah, here's the part in which I'm texturing the car. So pretty much the pieces that need texturing, like the tires, the rims, um, I'm pretty much doing that here. And of course the license plate, as seen right there, All right? So now I'm pretty much applying the pieces of the car to this transformer, the Decepticon. So you can actually tell that it evolved, or I'm sorry, it transformed from my Mercedes-Benz car. All right, so you notice that I'm adding the tires and the shoulder, the foot, I'm taking the, the rims, putting it right where it belongs. Um, there's also another license plate in the front. Here I'm pretty much breaking the, the front bumper of my car, deleting some parts and adding it to the shoulder, making it look good. And there you go. Of course, you need the emblem of the Decepticon, so I placed that right there. Um, added some more pieces in the back to make it look populated and there you go guys that's pretty much the decepticon in its finished form right there all right so here we go again pretty much just 
adding some finishing touches and there it is guys now here it is here is the finished piece in maya this is rendered as a turntable in maya obviously and it's pretty much using what i've learned in terms of shaders and materials so you can obviously tell that i got the materials on on spot like i got it spot on so here's the ambient inclusion this is pretty much showing off the details of each piece i mean i don't know what to say i mean look at that looks awesome uh this is rendered using mental ray by the way if you guys haven't noticed it yet so again this is all in maya this is rendered in maya this is not in zbrush no more all right so this is pretty much all ready to go for rigging and animation of course but yeah look at that looks good so far i don't know about you guys and i really can't wait to start animating it all right so here we go again you will notice that i used the fresnel shader um so a technique that my teacher taught me a long time ago um so it really gives off that realism in terms of reflection all right so keep that in mind when i'm doing these cyborg robotic uh, characters fresnel will always be involved all right here we are again looks great so far everything is all good to go uh later on after this i believe i i end up showing you guys um some renders some still renders uh, so the renders that you guys are about to see, uh, these are renders that were in my Facebook fan page, alright? So these are the official finished renders of my character, and here we are, here we go. So here it is, here's Monsoon guys, all finished, ready to go. Looks extremely beautiful. Um, if you guys want to know some tips, when you guys are, as an artist, um, learn to challenge yourself and learn to have fun with it, because you'll never know what you end up going to create, you, you'll never know what you guys gonna what you guys are gonna end up creating you know at first when i first started out i never knew that i was gonna end up creating something this good you know just in my opinion this ended up becoming something a lot bigger than i suspected you know it looks great um i accomplished what i wanted i accomplished what i wanted to accomplish which was create a model of my car as well as the awesome decepticon form not only that, I wanted it to look at a, at a certain style, and I wanted it to have a particular um, complexity to it, you know? So you can see, if you look closely, the parts are all there. Like, it's amazing how many parts I, I placed in this thing, you know? So now, uh, to finish this, this rendering finished um, part of this video, <laughs> um, in order to finish this off, here are the renders from Keyshot. Look how beautiful these are. Um, these aren't my. This is this. Remember, this is not in Maya. Uh, this is all in Keyshot. You you guys will also notice that the the Decepticon is all posed, and the reason why it's posed is because I already rigged it. I rigged it when I was in the Philippines. You know, so yeah, it's all ready to go, guys. All ready to go for animation for its transformation. Notice how awesome Keyshot is in terms of rendering. It really gives you a hyper-realistic render. You know? Look at that. So that'll be it for this rendering um, segment for this video. Um, I will show you guys the actual rig of Monsoon up next. Alright? Alright guys, to end this um, video off, I'm pretty much going to end my, my CG modeling videos here on youtube like this from now on i'm pretty much going to show you guys not just the finished model in maya but also the um the rigged the finished rigged now again i'm not the best rigger in the world but i do know a thing or two about rigging and as always with everything that i do i learn pretty much one after the other like i learn as i grow i guess and um as a beginner i believe this is a really successful rig all right to be honest with you guys this is actually the first character that i rigged so this is the first time i'm actually showing you guys my first um character rig all right so here's monsoon uh no surprise here uh, you guys have seen what he looks like all rendered up all looking good all ready to go so now so now let me show you guys the rigged monsoon all right so this is pretty much what 
the animator the animators will be messing with okay so as always in terms of rigs you have the master control right here so if you want to move the whole entire character this is how you do it as well as rotate you also have scale but enough of that let me show you guys the the controls that are worth showing so thank god for tutorials because if it wasn't for tutorials i wouldn't be i wouldn't know how to do this so check this out uh this i believe this is essential for every character rig there is you need a foot roll see that uh, i'm adjusting this by holding down middle click with the control all right so this pretty much has a value of one which is this and negative one which is that so in technical terms it's actually this is actually a whole animation on its own okay i achieved this using driven key set driven key okay um you can do so much with set driven key so it's really cool and uh you can also rotate it rotate the feet uh let me reset this real quick put it back to zero uh you can rotate it of course um, and, uh, and as always, you got the IK right here. So notice how it's moving based on the IK handle, okay? So that's pretty much how you get the whole realistic move, okay? Now, there, there is one downside with my rigs. Um, I don't know how to do the IK and FK switch just yet. So for now, you guys are pretty much gonna stick with me on IK, okay? Um, I haven't actually made this into an FK yet. Like, I don't know how. Like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to create the um, IK, FK on and off switch using the three individual joint chains. If you guys, for those of you who do know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that's that. Uh, so that's it for the legs. So now let, let me take you guys on to the hand. So check this out. The I made a control for the hand so that you're able to curl it into a fist see that Isn't that awesome also this this too has a control for the ik so this is pretty much how it's going to move if you want to animate it see that so rigging if you guys don't know what rigging is it's pretty much you're rigging it into like a puppet you're adding controls to your character because guess what if you just sculpt on zbrush the only thing that it will be is a sculpture, nothing more. Um, I believe every every person in Zebra should know how to bring in something from ZBrush to Maya, so that it can be at least used to some significant, you know, project or another. All right. So this is pretty much Monsoon, the same character that you guys saw, all sculpted in ZBrush, brought into Maya so that it can be used for production. All right. So again, here's the arm IK, here's the control for the hands, if you want it to curl up into a fist or not, and here's also a control that I did, check this out. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Here is the control for the blade extension, for the blade extension, extension. Uh, notice how it's, ex it's um, ex extending when I change the value from 0 to 1, 1 being in this position. All right, so this is obviously um, it's a decent rig, you know, it's not the best, but it will do uh, really simplistic. It does what I need to do. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, here is the center of mass. So notice here, this is pretty much the center of the weight. OK, here is the the upper torso. Um, here is the lower which is the lower legs the, the twist okay so check that out i also made a control for the eyes so that you can control how it glows i can i can't obviously show that to you here uh it will only show if it's rendered out um here's the neck control check it out here's the head so it's you guys pretty that's pretty much what this is you know i don't know how else to explain it to you guys um, this is pretty much my my pipeline in terms of production. I do what I can in terms of modeling in both ZBrush and Maya. And once that's done and all textured up, I bring it here in Maya and rig it.
and send it to the animator so hopefully that's the job that i get in the industries when i graduate you know but yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully you guys learned a lot from this um you know remember the chapter skips are always in the description if you guys made it this far without skipping well i congratulate you guys because you guys have a lot of patience you know and uh, also thank you for taking interest in my digital side as you all know my digital side it's not it's not the side in which a lot of people like for me i guess because a lot of people expect masks and you know stuff like that well you know this is my career option guys and this is something you guys have to accept for me as well all right so you're not only gonna see masks for me as well as videos but you guys will also see my cg work as well all right so what you guys are seeing here this is what i want to do as a career okay this is what i want to do as a career this is what's going to give me my dream life in the future all right have a nice house maybe a family um you know all that stuff this is what's going to give me this is what's going to get me there okay i guarantee you guys and uh thank you for watching this um, if you guys haven't already subscribed if you guys are new to my videos please subscribe um, it will help me out a lot uh, please like this video share it with your friends comment on it do whatever show your support guys and also um, please check out my website. I just finished it just recently actually I, I finished it around December 2013. So that was like two months ago uh, Please check out my website. It has all my all the stuff that I has all my art pretty much. Okay um, That will be in the description below. That'll be triple w dot one fisher compares dot com and also uh, Please like my fan page uh, show your support on Facebook that will be www.facebook.com slash Paris. Again, subscribe to my YouTube if you guys haven't already. And also, if you guys have a Twitter, if you guys want exclusive updates on, what I'm, on the art that I'm doing daily, or pretty much whenever I'm doing art, uh, that will be twitter.com slash evilsaw13. And again, thank you guys for watching this, and I will definitely have more characters for you guys in the future. Alright, so thank you for watching this, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Um, that will be in the description below. That